For AAA gaming in 2024, 16 gigabytes of RAM is the minimum you should have in your machine, and hardware on boxed are even recommending 32. Our budget eSports machine, the Fujitsu, seems to have been quite happy running with 8 gigabytes of system memory, but with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 costing less than 30 Great British Pounds, or around 38 US dollars, can you afford to not have 16 gigs in 2024? All previous benchmarks have been run with this 8GB set of Corsair Vengeance LPX memory, replacing this 8GB Samsung module that was originally installed. I purchased this crucial module to give 16GB of total system memory, but while initially testing OK, the machine now no longer posts with this module installed. I had this Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro set for another build, so we'll use that instead. As this is an OEM machine, there's no option to modify the memory speeds, and XMP profiles are not supported. Any DDR4 module will run at the JEDEX specification, so bear that in mind if you need RAM that runs at a faster speed, such as 2666 or 3200 MHz. Here's a quick reminder of the system specs. All games were run from the NVMe boot disk or SATA SSD, with 8 or 16 GB of RAM. Overwatch 2 says 6GB is enough for minimum specs, and while it ran OK on 8GB, we do see an improvement with additional memory. The average frame rate is identical as it's capped to 60fps, and at the 1% low, 16GB is 7fps faster at 47.9, compared to 40.8fps with only 8GB. At the 0.1% low, there's little in it but the 16GB run was better by a frame at 10.5fps, compared to 9.33fps for 8GB. Overwatch 2 benefits from additional system memory. If this title is part of your eSports library, 16GB will increase performance. Warframe's minimum system memory requirement is 4GB. While this feels a little unrealistic these days, our findings do tend to support that. Results across the board are close enough to be within a margin of error, with around 1 FPS between all results. For the average frame rate, 16GB comes out on top with 68.1 FPS, but 8GB is only 1.6 FPS behind at 66.5 FPS. At the 1% low, 16GB still leads with 42.6 FPS, compared to 41.7 FPS for 8GB. However, at the 0.1% low, the tables turn and 8GB comes out on top with 33.1 FPS, compared to 16GB 32.1 FPS. At these settings, Warframe plays just fine on 8GB of RAM, with no apparent benefit seen from 16GB. Fortnite's minimum system requirement of 4GB seems even more unrealistic than Warframe's. I haven't tested 4GB in Fortnite, but I bet it's not fun. For the average frame rate, it's close, with only 1.5fps between the results, but the 8GB run was better at 59.26fps, compared to 57.7fps for 16GB. At the 1% low, there's a real difference, with 16GB providing a superior 35.5fps, compared to 31.3fps for 8GB and at the 0.1% low, 16GB produces 8.95fps, compared to 8GB slightly worse 6.62fps. Fortnite benefits from additional system memory. Hardware Unboxed said that Fortnite can utilise over 17GB, so if you're a competitive Fortnite player, you might want to consider 24 or even 32GB of system memory. Rocket League says it requires a minimum of 4GB of memory, but recommends 8. So how does 16 impact performance? Well, this is the first odd result, with 8GB outperforming 16 across the board. For the average frame rate, 8GB delivers 142.5fps, while 16GB delivers a lower 133.5fps. This pattern is repeated at the 1% and 0.1% lows. Both configurations are playable, but the game performed better on only 8GB. From the video, we can see Rocket League utilises just slightly over 8GB of memory, 
so I would have thought 16 gigabytes would have performed better. GTA 5 is another title where 4 gigabytes of system memory is the minimum requirement, but it recommends 8 gigabytes. So how does 16 do? Well, it's another win for 8 gigabytes across the board, but it's a very close win with 8 gigabytes only around 1 FPS ahead of 16. For the average frame rate, 8 gigabytes scores 55.7 FPS compared to 54.7 FPS for 16. And at the 1% low, we see the biggest difference with 8 gigabytes nearly 2 FPS ahead with 40.4 FPS compared to 38.8 FPS. At the 0.1% low, things tighten up again with 8 gigabytes scoring 38.4 FPS and 16 gigabytes just over 1 FPS behind at 37.3 FPS. GTA 5 will happily use over 8 gigabytes of system memory so 16 gigabytes should help, but in this test it was the 8 gigabyte set that performed slightly better. 8 gigabytes is the minimum for Battlefield 1 with 16 gigabytes as the recommended system memory requirement, and things look promising with 16 gigs delivering a higher average frame rate at 41 FPS compared to 8 gigabytes 39.5 FPS. However, at the 1% low, 8 gigabytes pushes ahead with 28.2 FPS compared to 27.3 FPS with 16. And at the 0.1% low, 8 gigs is ahead again with 23.6 compared to 22 FPS for 16 gigs. While there was about 1 FPS between all the results, the 8 gigabyte set pushed ahead slightly at the 1% and 0.1% lows. Battlefield 1 will happily use more than 8 gigabytes of memory, but with results so close it seems that there's another bottleneck to performance in this title, which is most likely the GPU, but we could see performance gains from a faster CPU. The minimum requirement for Apex Legends is oddly 6 gigabytes, so either configuration is more than enough. But what do the results tell us? For the average frame rate, we see a 3 FPS advantage to the 8 gigabyte config with 30.2 FPS compared to 27.5 for the 16 gigabyte config. At the 1% low, 8 gig is ahead at 23.15 FPS with the 16 gigs delivering 22 FPS. And at the 0.1% low, the 16 gig delivers a superior 21.2 FPS compared to 8 gigs 20.5 FPS. For Apex Legends, the 8 gigabyte config delivered mostly better performance. This title will use more than 8 gigabytes of system memory, so performance must be limited elsewhere. In this system, it's probably the GPU. Dota 2's system requirements are lightweight, including the 4 gigabyte minimum system memory but we see a big difference in performance between our two configs. For the average frame rate, 8GB is ahead by 10 FPS at 107.7 FPS compared to 97.4 FPS for 16GB. At the 1% low, 8GB is ahead by 11 FPS at 71.5 FPS compared to 60.2 FPS for 16 gigabytes. And at the 0.1% low, 8 gigabytes is ahead by 5 FPS at 52.8 FPS, compared to 47.9 FPS for 16. Dota 2 will happily use more than 8 gigabytes of system memory, yet we see 16 gigabytes performing worse than 8. Clearly, the 16 gigabyte config is slower for some reason. Rainbow Six Siege needs a minimum of 6 gigabytes of system memory, so both configs have this title covered, yet we see the 8 gigabyte config sweep the board. For the average frame rate, 8 gigabyte is ahead with 49.5 FPS, compared to 45.2 FPS for 16 gigs, and at the 1% low, 8 gigabyte scores 40 FPS compared to 36.7 FPS. For the 0.1% low, there's a bigger difference with 8GB scoring 39fps compared to 16GB 32.9fps. There's no denying it now, this 16GB memory set is slower than the 8GB set, 
even though both are running at the same JEDEC 2133 MHz specifications. 8GB is the minimum for PUBG, so do we see an improvement from moving to the recommended 16GB? For the average frame rate, the 8GB config is ahead at 46.22 FPS compared to 43.23 FPS for 16 gigs, and the gap widens at the 1% low where 8 gigabytes is 3 FPS ahead at 23.24 FPS compared to 20.8 FPS. The 0.1% lows are tied with a margin of error at 7.3 to 7.5 FPS. In PUBG, we're seeing the 8GB config performing better than the recommended 16GB, but we do appear to be CPU bottlenecked in this title. So what happened? We upgraded our system and saw worse performance. Well, clearly the 16GB kit was slower than the 8GB kit. How is this possible when the speed and timings are controlled by the JEDEC specification? Let's take a look at what timings they were actually running at. Comparing both RAM kits and disregarding the on-core frequency which is dynamic, we can see that most of the timings are identical. Apart from the Row Refresh Cycle Time or TRFC, which is much higher on the 16GB kit. Now from what I've read, this setting is the time taken for the memory to refresh the data it holds. While it's refreshing, the CPU must wait for this process to complete, so a higher refresh rate can result in worse performance. And it makes sense that a higher density memory kit will take longer to refresh. It's also possible that there are other timing differences between these two kits that I haven't seen. So the 16GB kit may also be slower in other timings, but since these settings are configured automatically, there seemed little point in checking them. It seems that 8GB of RAM is fine for eSports titles at present, but for some newer titles such as Forspoken and The Last of Us Part 1, 16GB is required for the game to run, so I'll be sticking with this 16GB config even if it is a little slower, so we can test some newer titles. Next time we'll be upgrading to an i7-6700 and seeing if a 4-core 8-thread CPU improves performance on our eSports titles. Catch you next time, Rammers! Laters!